Hello and welcome back to my Skyrim Creation Kit Bootcamp tutorial series. This time I'm going to talk about creating a world space. In the Creation Kit, go to the top of the toolbar and select World and World Spaces. As you can see, a window will pop up with a bunch of world space information. Um, since we want to make a new world space, right click on the left hand side and select New and just give it a name. This doesn't have to be um, a name that players will see. So if you want to add numbers in here or abbreviations, that's fine. In your new world space entry, give it a proper name. This name will be displayed to the, to the player. Um, so that's at the very top. We'll call our area test world space. Now you can attach it to a parent world space. From the drop down list, you can select Tamriel. You can select the other things as well. Usually, Tamriel is the best, it's the most general, is what I should say. If you think that what you're making is going to be similar to a different area, similar enough so that you can borrow the same data for climate and for the sky cell or for other environmental things, then you could pick that instead. For this example, I'm just going to use Tamriel. This allows your world space to inherit certain information. For example, you could find climate data that is similar to another one that's already been created. You could also make your own climate data, which we'll talk about in a different video. If you don't want to inherit any of this, you don't have to. You can just leave it blank. You can also inherit your sky cell from the parent world space. You can also change your sky information, whether you have grass, if you can wait from this world space, and if you can fast travel from this world space. Additionally, you can change your interior lighting to match another lighting scheme that's already been created, or you can make your own interior lighting scheme. You can also change the music that is played for your world space, and you can set its location, or you can create a location and set it to your new location. These will be discussed more in individual videos in the future. One of the most important things to check is whether you're making a small world or a large world. By checking small world, you are going to allow it to speed up processing for this world space. It's usually best to mark it as a small world. Even if you think it'll be rather large, it probably won't be as large as you imagine it will be. Unless you are making a total world conversion, or you're making a world that's as large as Skyrim itself, then you should probably leave it as a small world. You can also check fixed dimensions for this world space. That allows you to say how many cells you want on the X and Y axis. If you do not select fixed dimensions, then it will generate the size of the world space for you. Hit OK. And now you will find your area in your list of world spaces in your cell view window. When you select it, you'll notice that there's only one cell right now called Wilderness. If you double click on Wilderness, it will take you to an outdoor cell that's underneath water. If you scroll out, which is scrolling the mouse wheel towards you, you will eventually breach the water. At this point, you want to edit the landscape. For that, I'm going to make a separate video just about landscape editing. 